Welcome back everyone to another PS Vita homebrew video and for those newcomers welcome to the channel I really do appreciate you checking out my video and if you like the content make sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already and make sure to hit that notification bell too so you don't miss anything in the future now we're looking at the dedicated Super Nintendo emulator for the PS Vita which is called the SNES uh, let's see, 9X Vita by Gabby and Fran Gars J. It's an amazing emulator that works very well. So for those who are the more passionate Super Nintendo and just want something simple and not go through like RetroArch or RetroArc, uh, you have this amazing app that will emulate your games no problem with the native resolution. So that is very, very nice. And go ahead and download it. And it should be very simple to install. It's nothing too crazy. Just go through the Vita Homebrew browser. And for those who just found my video for the first time and want to install the Super Nintendo emulator, you will have to have custom firmware installed. And if you haven't already done that and modded your console, I have full guides in my playlist down in the description down below. Very easy to follow. It does take some time, but it's so worth it, especially if you're a huge Super Nintendo fan like I am. That's one of my favorite consoles of all time. So it's nice to see that there's a dedicated emulator for the PS Vita. So let's start up the application here. And here is the home page. We have the game control and options at the top, along with the date, time and percentage of our battery. And we can switch tabs by pressing the L and R triggers on our console. So here I opened up the options. We can go into game. This is where we're going to select our game within the folders of our SD card. Here's controllers or control. And we can change and remap our buttons however we like it. For now I'm just going to leave it at default. So let's go back to game. And make sure you already have your ROMs all copied over to your SD card. For me, it's going to be at the root of my SD card, so under the UXO folder. And you just want to press the triangle button to go to the parent directory. And I'm going to scroll down to ROMs, and it should be there. There it is. Nice. And I have my collection right here under SNES ROMs. So I'll open up one of my favorite games, which is Donkey Kong 2. So here it is. And we press X. It should load and it will start emulating your game. But there is a problem uh, with the default settings and it's a little too small. So we have to go back into our options and change that. And I'm going to press start so you guys can see where we're at here. And yeah, it's not, not, it's not looking good. Yeah, it's too small, right? So in order for you to go back to the options or go back to the home without closing the game is pressing both the L and R buttons just like that and scroll down to the options and here on the screen size we want to change this to whoops so in order for you to open that option press the right on the d-pad and it will bring up all the different options what we want to do is scaled 16 by 9 fit screen after you made your selection just press the circle button and it will take you back to the game. There we go. So I am losing a little bit of frames. This game usually runs at 60 frames per second. So let's go back to the options. And here this option is enable or disable screen smoothing. So let's enable this and see what happens. Let's press circle. It does give us a nice smooth picture. Let's go back and disable this. So yeah, you can see like it's a little bit grainy, I guess, a little bit more pixelated. Go back, let's enable, press circle, and it smooths it out. So if you like that option, there you go. You can enable it. Uh, let's go down to the frame limiter and the performance Let's change this to 60 frames. In frame skipping, let's change this to no skipping. Uh, V-Sync, let's disable that. Uh, PSP clock frequency, let's change that to 444. 
and show FPS counter. Let's change that to enabled and we should be good. So now we're getting a much smoother gameplay. It's not full 60, but it's better than what we had before. I think it was sitting at like 30 or 25 or 20. So yeah, pretty, pretty solid. There's not a bunch of lag with this. So very good alternative. If you don't like using RetroArch and you just want to play the game without messing with all the other different features that comes with it. All you have to do is just install the app. Go through your options, tweak a few things there, and you're up and running. So, very good. Now let's talk about the save states. Press the L and R together to go back to your options. And scroll to save and load. Press square to save your state. And now, you can save wherever you like. And you have multiple uh, empty slots for that game. Very, very good. But yeah, so far so good. Really love the fact that we have this app available for us on the PS Vita. And it works very, very well. They did a great job. And for the update to be 2016, that's not bad. Hoping to see a new update very soon, maybe this year. Someone can pick up on that uh, project. Or the original devs can continue to give us a little bit more there as you can see there's not a whole lot when it comes to the icon there's like no picture for the icon uh, it's just like a blank I don't know if it's me but that's what I keep seeing is just this blank white icon for the SNES emulator but yeah that is it for this one guys thank you so much for watching I really do appreciate it if you enjoyed it, make sure to hit the thumbs up button. And if you have any questions whatsoever, please comment down below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. And if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a video like this and many more to come in the future. Take care, everyone. Stay safe out there and I'll see you on the next one.